Welcome to Spark Stories, where entrepreneurs and experts share their brand story and how they found their spark, the spark that started it all. Welcome to Spark Stories. We're live in the studio with Ms. Dunshay Usher. Welcome. She's going to share with us today who she is, what she does, and why it matters. Hello. How are you? I'm wonderful. Glad to be here. I'm so glad you're here. How was your weekend? Wonderful. Very productive. So what was so productive about it? So I did a pop-up shop um, right across the street from South DeKalb Mall. It was a church fall festival, and I was invited. Don Shea Shutik was invited. And they what they do is they do this fall festival every year, and they give away free food and free health screenings and a nice musical for the community. It was amazing. Did a lot of people pop up? They did. I had some customers that was in the area. I did post it on my social media pages and say, hey, if you're in the area, come by and say hello, because everybody's so fascinated with the mobile shootique. And a lot of my customers came by and showed a lot of love. They took pictures. They met me in person. It was great. I'm so glad um, that it was productive. It also sounds successful. Yes, it was. And I knew um, my audience going. So I always when I do events, I, I do like a canvas of who I'm present, who I'm presenting to. So I had like a clearance table, five and $10 items that I just totally marked down. Um, and it just so my way of saying thank you and giving back. And uh, just like I thought it was some people that just didn't have it. And they were so appreciative, like, wow, this bling sandal was five bucks. I, I believe, um, in business and just in life in order to get, you have to give. And they were very, very receptive of that concept. Can you tell us a little bit more about your business, the name and the products and service that you offer? My business name is called Don Shea Shutique. My hub is on my website, www.donshe hyphen shoes. And that hyphen is like the dash mark if you're writing down a phone number versus a parenthesis mark because some people kind of get it confused. It's a shootique. And from there, a year, a, we've been in business for two years. And um, the second year, in addition to the business was my mobile shootique. Okay. And oh, I love it. Um, it was part of my business plan. So it's 30 feet long. Um, it's heat controlled, air conditioned. And when you walk on, it looks like a a store that will be in the mall is absolutely beautiful. Um, I have 20 foot display cases and I house about 90 pair of shoes on there. Wow. Yes. How exciting is that? that yes. I mean, do you sell only female uh, women's shoes? Yes, women. The guy is coming. So phase three is going to be men. Okay. I have been harassed <laughs> so much um, from the women and men. Like, where are you going to where are you going to start selling men? Um, my slogan is shoe aside affordability, where you can commit shoe aside. Shoe aside. That's yes. really catchy for those people who love shoes. Uh, so, uh, that's really cool. I like that. How did you come up with that concept? Um, when I started researching my um, business adventure. I wanted something to stick out from the rest. And some people had that, you know, I always solicit feedback, but I know how I am as a woman and I always commit suicide. So it just was in my spirit Okay, because <laughs> you never get enough shoes, right? Or you never get enough <laughs> shoes. Now, that's very interesting. Um having a passion. So when did you discover that you had a passion for shoes? Oh God, just as a woman period. But um, what the light bulb went off, I have a really, really good friend of mine who I'll call my brother back in October. I'll never forget 2017. He came over here, came to visit from out of town. I hadn't seen him probably about two years. And um, I, one of my rooms is a shoe room. And he was like, sister, you need to open up a shoe store. And I was like, what? He was like, yes. He And he's very fashionable. Yes. And he said, you have such great taste in shoes and style. I think this would be a good fit for you. Mm -hmm. So I, I, he left that seat with me and I started thinking about it. And I have another good friend of mine that's a graphic artist. Mm -hmm. And, you know, social media is brutally honest. So I started with the logo first and kind of pitched it out there to social media like, hey, ladies, what do you guys think about Don Shea Shutique? And um, I use my name because it's unique. Uh, you don't hear too many Don Shays of the world. And when I do hear it, it's like, oh, okay, someone else have my name. Right. And they're always younger than me. 
<laughs> and so I, I, I pitched and I, I love pink and black and white. So you know what? You want something that stand out. So I pitched it to social media. They loved it. Really? Yes. Oh, that's really good. So you kind of did like a market survey I, in order to kind of, uh, or focus group, if you will, to see that if it was something that will resonate with your audience. And it did. It did. And not only that, what else it did for me from a, um, inventory perspective, understanding my audience, I just started pulling all type of shoes just from everywhere, like or not just trying to understand where the need was. And fashionable, trendy, quality shoes is what I gathered after I did my assessment. And I said affordable because my market was the working class. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I I mean, I, to, to people that sells the higher priced shoes. Mm-hmm. And I'll say that because I learned so much about shoes. Right. I was like, okay, I want to kind of stick out from the, from the rest. So I'm going to give you this shoe that's very quality and affordable. I'd rather see you walk away with three or four pair versus one and come back. Sure. That's a good concept to have. Now you mentioned that you started, someone gave you planted the seed for you to start your business. Yes. Then you reached out and commissioned a graphic designer to help you develop the visual aspect. And then you came up with the name. Mm hmm. Now, you have to tell us, I know you said your name is very unique, and you're right. You're my first Dunshay. <laughs> so you. tell us what Dunshay means, and, and then how you infuse that into your building the personality of your visual brand. Okay, so Dunshay is a French name. Um, my mom told me a long time ago when she got pregnant, her best friend was French. Oh, wow. And she had named me for my mom, and she loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, how I infused that with my brand, because again, it is unique just when when you say Don Shea versus a Kimberly, not that there is anything wrong with a Kimberly, sure. but a Don Shea is like, hmm, mm. <laughs> you know, it, it leaves a, an impression on you when you speak it or say it. Sure. So I infuse it with my brand so you won't forget me. Right. <laughs> very good. Very good. And you also talked a little bit about your target audience in working. How do you connect with the women who purchase your shoes? Social media. Listen, um, technology is amazing. It has brought us so far. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it has been the platform of Don Shea Shootique. Mm-hmm. Um, just being able to reach such a wide range market from a geographical to locally, it's just been amazing. I'm very interactive. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I go live on my social. I talk to these people like they're sitting around in my living room. <laughs> Um, I pride myself on customer service. My customers have wrote so many written rather so many great reviews on my on Google and on my page is how I'm so personable. And that's important. Um, I believe when you establish a relationship and how you treat people is why they keep coming back and, and, and supporting you. All right. Yeah, it is very important to have that label of great customer service because it builds brand ambassadors and they will speak for you when you're not in the room and they're going to wear your uh, ac- do you do accessories? I do. So accessories and your shoes and all those things. So it's very good that, again, that you pride yourself on that because I think that's one of the golden rules for long-lasting, sustainable businesses. I totally agree. I even had customers in other states that have come up because I do every year I do a, a one year a year anniversary mm-hmm. and I, I do it very professionally because you don't want the whole Atlanta showing up right right <laughs> <laughs> um, and I solicit to my followers hey I'm having my my anniversary is coming if you would like to come send me your email address and let me send you an evite mm-hmm. and when I tell you my very first um, one year anniversary a hundred and twenty five people showed up that is awesome so you you served on exclusivity yes you made it exclusive because everyone likes that one-on-one and that goes back to the experience that you create for your targeted audience so that you can have effective branding effective marketing and overall repeat customers and that sounds like a recipe to successful business yes it has been amazing um I'm honored to say when I, cause I did my launch event last year in March and then right, right 
after that in September is when I did the go live on my um, cutting the ribbon ceremony on my mobile shootique. Oh, very nice. And it was amazing. I was overwhelmed. So many people came out and showed up and supported. That's so true. I'm proud to say Don Shea Shutique is on the move. All right. Oh, that's really good. If you were in the studio, you should see her beautiful smile. <laughs> she's smiling from ear to ear because she's so excited. Um, and thank you for sharing with us, you know, who you are. Now, could you give some advice to people or women in, um, who are interested in starting not only their own boutique, but just a business in general? Tell us some of the, uh, again, taking your passion and turning it into a profitable, uh, business. What tip would you share with someone who's thinking about starting? Go for it. Most of us allow fear to um, negate us from what we really want to do. Sure. Don't let anyone discourage you. My first tip would be believe in yourself mm -hmm. and just go for it. Research, 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 you know, n connect yourself with people. If you're, if you're not business savvy or paperwork savvy that are, mm -hmm. and just and, and create your own roadmap by surrounding yourself around people that are business that can assist you along the way. Cause this it's out there. Right. And I think a lot of times, like you said, fear does step in the way. And I think sometimes fear and confidence are cousins to each yes. other. And just saying, because you exude confidence. Have you always been at that place or this is that, that natural God given? Well, I will tell you this. I'm going to share a little personal of, of business of mine and it could be a testimony to others. Um, my childhood wasn't very well, you know, growing up, I grew up in poor, poverty stricken, drug addicted parents, and I had to survive. So that's where the confidence come in at, because I couldn't fail moving forward. Mm -hmm. And so just from those life challenges and those storms has has embedded confidence in me because in my mind, I've always said, I, I got to do it. And so I always, when I talk to my son, I tell him, whatever you put your mind to, trust me, you can, that is a true statement. I, yes. I'm living it. Mm -hmm. So that's where the confidence come from me telling myself and believing in me, Hey, you can do this. Even young with a kid at 14. Wow. Okay. Um, I've, I've, I have overcame so many challenges. So my experience is where the confidence, where I reap confidence, just because I've had to buckle down and I've had to do it along with me and God. Right. What an awesome story. And I'm glad that you're an overcomer. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> you're an overcomer and you've been able to be successful in your professional and in your personal life. And I really admire that about your story. And again, just sharing with our audience, again, how are you finding that spark that what keeps you going and how you can encourage and uplift other females or female entrepreneurs to either come into your industry or to stay or start their own. And I like that you gave the advice of do your research. I think that is the first step in building a strong brand, uh, building a strong business. Who, who are your competitors? And you, I don't like to use the word competitors because there's enough room out there for all of us. Once you identify who your market is and who you're targeting there, I like there's a, there are many seats at the table. Yes. I agree with that. many seats at the table. So there are not a lot of mobile mm -hmm. shoe stores. So you are <laughs> setting the pace of innovation within your market. I am the only one here in Atlanta with it. People, whenever I do events, it always leads to four or five more bookings because they get on it and it's like, wow. So again, I'm going to go back to when you're following your dreams, research. I wrote this in my business plan when I first remember I only it's this is my second year. Wow. OK, March or make third year. I did the mobile store a year later and that was a big leap of faith. Mm -hmm. Trust me, it was. But it was a need for it because when I did my research it was not, I was trying to, and think about um, money. Okay. So I'm a money manager 
And I didn't want to break a, a, a mortar because I'm like, that's expensive. Those are expenses. I don't want to be locked into a five-year lease, not making the revenue because that could make or break you. So when I started thinking about the mobile from the mobile aspect, okay, so how can I be efficient, cut costs and continue to make money right? At, and still sell shoes at affordability? Mobile my is paid for is mine. Guess what cost the cost for me to keep it going is gas. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and keep my big 2500 uh, service to pull it. <laughs> right. Very, very, very good. But what type of events would you use a mobile Oh, I have done some, some great events. I've done church next weekend. I'll be at the Tuskegee Morehouse game. I'm doing Fountain City, um, classic in November. I've done personal shoe parties, Ooh. personal <laughs> pop up shops. Okay, so good. it has been, it has been very interesting. And it's funny because people always ask me, so where are you going to be at next week on a corner somewhere? I'm like, well, no, uh, I, I use this again. This is phase two as an addition to the website the website is the hub mm -hmm. so what i tend to do is keep all the new arrivals and the best on the mobile store sure. right and when i do an event that's what i bring with me mm -hmm. so if we're looking for the mobile where can we find you only at isolated events or do you just do pop-ups okay so when i do them in like i did the community indicator we were parked at right across the street in the rosie's plaza i post them on my website and I'm a, if you go to pop up, it'll tell you where I'm going to be at. Okay. And I promise you, I, it's, this is just God given talent because before, um, when I did the mobile store, I, I, like I said, I go live and talk to my people. Like they're right here in front of me. Right. I'm like, okay, guys, this is where I'm going to be. Mm -hmm. I, and people come and it, it makes me feel so good because they, one lady came was like, girl, I seen that flash on your Facebook. I did a U turn in the middle of downtown. <laughs> I had to come meet down. She you think you was too close to me right you know because people want to meet me because I, i'm so personable sure you know and even saturday one of my customers she did a whole video wow <laughs> i looked at my social media page like oh arithia speak she she did a whole video like i finally made i met down in person she raved about how my mobile shootique looks so much better in person mm -hmm. and she took photos on the inside and outside showed me shopping Very, she did like um cameos you know right. like, pictures of me i thought was amazing I even though she was taking pictures, she got pictures of me t checking people out. In and action, live in, in action. action. Yeah, it was it was amazing. Okay, so you've been in business for um almost approaching three years. Mm -hmm. What was your career before Don Shea? Boutique. boutique. So I am an account manager in workers comp, um, which I, I'm a nurse by trade and I got into the workman's comp arena, um, by that, by, by me having such an extensive medical background. So that's my life. Um, I engage with, I'm a people person. Um, I, I, I deal with people all day, every day from all retrospects of the world. So that's what I do. Okay. So again, can you give us some advice for someone who has a full-time career and they have a passion and they have a hobby, that transition phase, what that kind of looked like for you? Yes. So I will tell you this, it's working two jobs. I'm going to be honest, it's hard work, but when it's yours, you're willing to do whatever it takes. And how much time to put in It's days when I have to do inventory that I get off from working eight hours a day, talking and dealing and managing with people all day. And it's like, OK, time to shut that hat off and turn on Don Shea um, Shutique. It, it's impossible to juggle both throughout right. the day because my day job is very demanding. But I will tell you, for me, because of the passion and and my Shutique is my baby. If I got I've been nice, I've been up to one or two or three o'clock in the morning, not even realizing. And just cause uh, off adrenaline, because it's personal. This is mine, yes. <laughs> and it got to get done. So it, you don't second guess. Oh, like when you're working, oh, time to go home. Right. Well, <laughs> when is lunch? <laughs> right. When is lunch? <laughs> right. Um, so I'll say just time management, mm -hmm. um, and and be willing to put the work in, and know there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Definitely, because I'm not even paying myself now. <laughs> Don Shea Shutique owe me a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> that means you got to continue to work hard. <laughs> yes. So I will say this, um, on a positive note, 
um, what's the best part about it all is you're not stressed out trying to pay all your bills off of your business. Yes. So for people that's discouraged and saying, oh, I can't do it, or don't just jump out there and just bite on more than you can chew. Take your time, mm-hmm. work your job, figure out a way to manage your personal life and your business and, you know, and your family time and your me time. Because it's now listen, when I vacation, I vacation hard. <laughs> I do. You do have to have time for yourself. Very Don't true. burn out. But it's all about time management. Right. Let's t- let's take a, a thought right there. Self-care. A lot of women are wearing multiple hats raising families in their careers, community leaders. What do you do for self-care? Oh, vacation. And I'm not saying to each his own what they choose to do, a staycation, but vacation. I vacation hard. I travel the world. And guess what? Locally, when I can't travel, I take me a spa day. Mm -hmm. I exercise. You have to take care of yourself or you will burn out. Yeah. So if you for the for the women that this scared to fly or travel, go take you a, a Saturday at the hotel downtown and just check out. Mm-hmm. Get room service. Go get you a massage. You know, work out. I work out all the time and it helps me with stress. And then after that, I go to the spa once a week, hand and stone. Oh, it's wow. horrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you want to pay the hundred dollars for the bigger spas, they have other ones that's fifty that you be a part of a membership. I do it mm-hmm. just to unwind. Because right. you have to reset. You have to you reset. You gotta reset. Yes. I like that word reset. I mean, just the renewing and so that you can be fresh yes. and you can get new ideas and you can be energized within your business because burnout is real. It is. It is. And I'm telling you, anybody that know workers comp, it's hard. Mm-hmm. It's very, very hard. Even before a Don Shea Shutique, I had to reset. I had I reset all the time because my job is very demanding. I have a lot of compassion when it comes to it and it, it does stress you out. So you have to take time out for yourself. Yeah. So I th- thank you for sharing that with us because like I said, we're as women, we're so involved in so many different capacities that we don't take the time to reset. We don't. We don't. So that's going to be my challenge for uh, the listeners today to just really take time to reset so that you can refocus yes. and you can get started and live off of your passion and make that leap, those transitions. Mm-hmm. And so that you can live life on purpose. I agree. Yeah. And I think you're doing an awesome job with that. Thank you. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So again, if we looking for your mobile spot, but you so want us to start with you online. Yes. Again, the web the website is www.donshe hyphen shoes with a s dot com. And also I have just launched my shoe talk on shoe YouTube. Shoe talk. <laughs> oh, you gotta tell us about the shoe talk. <laughs> Yes. So I've realized that it's a lot of people that's not on Instagram and Facebook, but the world is on YouTube. We love YouTube. Yes, we do. (laughs) And so I started thinking because some people and uh, I'm the same as I'm the same way. We're visual people. It's some people that don't understand how to walk in a shoe, don't understand shoe care, style. So Don Shea's Shoe Talk is well-rounded, um, is very personable, and I give my audience some shoe talk. It's not just, oh, I'm selling this shoe. Let's talk. My first one, my first video, I talked about... um I'm sorry, my second video was shoe etiquette. And the first video was getting, putting outfits together, you know, okay. and, and, and the proper, uh, sh- foot care, you know, how to not have your sandals and with your chip toes. Oh. And I made it blue because, you know, some women, they, it happens. Um, I, I, I acknowledge, um, breast cancer this, this month also. And it was hot, ways of slaying pink. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Cause some people are afraid of, to be colorful. Mm-hmm. We're just black, blue, and brown. But colorful is very pretty if you know how to put it together. And you will be 
surprised at the people that literally left comments and email me like I want that whole outfit. Wow. So how did you put that together? Where did you get it from? So I sold other stores that I shop at mm. wow. <laughs> the sweater and the pants I had on and they bought the booty, the oh. boots, from, the booties from me. Very, very, <laughs> very good. So you're educating your listeners, your watchers. How often are you going live or doing we, your talks? Oh, every week I'm dropping a new video. Okay. Every yes. week. Is there a certain day? On Friday, the new video drop. Okay. Yes. So we drop a new video every Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, on Saturday, I met a lot of people at the event and I told them, if you subscribe and leave me your email, you get 15% off. And guess what, ladies? 15% off is a lot off a of 40 or $30 shoe. It is. Yes. Affordability. And my prices are amazing. I have a shoe from $20. So for the people that want to know the price range, I'm yes. proud to say 20 for a shoe sandal or booty. 20 to 40 bucks. Okay. And then like when you go to a more expensive booty to maybe like a thigh high to give you an idea of uh, maybe $55 would be the highest on, okay. on one of my expensive booty and a thigh high 60 to 70 bucks. Under a hundred dollars. And I'm telling you, ladies, I travel the world. I am a fashionista. I am a diva. So I am not going to sell something I would not wear. Right. Okay. Um, so it's very, quality and affordability and what I learned from going to these different shoe events and attending these shoe seminars we a lot of times pay for the label yeah. the, all, the shoes are made at the same place mm-hmm. we're just paying for a label because I had someone ask me and it was interesting when I first got started and I guess you know she was just a high end and, and I wasn't offended I appreciated the question but she was like why did shoe $40 and I told her, try it on. All my shoes have cushion insoles and made of quality. Mm-hmm. So just, and I said to her, affordability. Mm-hmm. I said, it's $40 because I will prefer for you to buy three pair versus one. Not saying the, the more higher end stores knock yourself out. But when I did my market research, as you advised earlier, that was my market, right. the middle. Right. Mm-hmm. The working class. And that's what we want. We don't have those other stores that used to be out. The bakers of the world and mm-hmm. the wild pears. That's old school. Yes. right? Yes. <laughs> All of those places. Yeah, they're gone. <laughs> they're gone. They're gone. Now, do you feel that um, bring up an interesting point about uh, the brick and mortar stores? A lot of the mall stores, brick and mortar, they're closing. Due to online sales. Now, have you seen an increase or decrease in your uh, sales because of the closures? I will say um, this is it's still in the middle. And the reason why I say that, because women want to try on touch and feel. Mm-hmm. They, they do. Um, so I'll say I'm still in the middle. You know, it, it just depends on what's going on. I will say, for an example, mm-hmm. school time. Yes. August sales went whoop. But I already knew and I expected that because people are getting getting ready for for school. Right. You know, school, getting their children together. And so, again, you just got to understand and be very in tune with your, with, market. With your market and your business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that's very interesting. I'm a I love shopping as well. And I like I enjoy going into the store. And like you said, that therapy of mm-hmm. trying the shoe on, does this fit? And I was like, I cannot believe that major stores are closed. Closing their doors because of online sales and you just can't get the experience. I know. Well, I'll say this um, about Don Shea Shutique. What, what I do offer for the people that's locally, I, they can schedule a private fitting to get on the mobile Shutique. And you'd be surprised. I have people come far. Um, our, our, our mobile Shutique is currently located in McDonough. And, you know, like we drive to the outlets. Yes. Hey, you know, these women, they come and they bring their mother, sister, cousins. Wow. And, and, and it's interesting because um, I did a carnival in Riverdale back a couple months ago. So the lady next to me was selling like snow cones and and she was like, I need to get in here to see what in the world are you selling and selling so much up. I see shoes, but she said, everybody coming out with bags and stuff. <laughs> and guess what? She left with six bags. Wow. <laughs> so again, it's, it's the personalism, um, the, and the women, ladies, 
email me and say, hey, Don Shay, go on the website because I understand I have strange and weird feet. And then once you come for that one time, I can advise you, hey, this shoe is not good for you. You know, I, I, looking at your feet, if I don't know feet, I can't sell a shoe. Um, but I have the women that come and they, I, I pull a, the store out and pull the generators out and we plug in and we have fun. Wow. So that's really um, interesting. I don't think a lot of people are, are aware that they can have custom fitted oh, yeah. shoes yeah. and the getting the proper fit. So everything is not, um, what do you call off the rack ready? Right. So you have to find that special shoe that really works for you. So we can come to your mm -hmm. site, mm -hmm. schedule a consultation. Yes. And, and you would measure shop. our feet for proper mm -hmm. size mm -hmm. and proper fit mm -hmm. and width. Awesome. Yes. That is really good. So tell us, how can we find you again on the web and on social media? Okay. So we'll start with IG is Don Shea Shootique, just like it's spelled. Mm -hmm. Don Shea Shootique. Everyone know how to spell Don Shea Shootique. I'm going to spell it for you. <laughs> and if you don't know what IG is, that is Instagram. Mm -hmm. Okay. Instagram. Um, we're on Twitter, Don Shea Shootique. And Facebook, I have two pages. It's Don Shea Shootique, but you have to separate. Is Don Shea and then Shootique. Now, one is you just click and follow. That's the business page. And the other one is a preview page, which is always full. Right. <laughs> but still, still, um, request me because people fall off sometimes and I could just add you on. Now that preview page stay full because again, I'll go live. We are visual people. I'll try to shoe on for, cause I have people that ship world, I ship worldwide. Okay. And they love it. They like, oh, that, cause the photos sometimes don't do well for the actual merchandise. Sure. So I try it on and I'm talking to you and I'm modeling it inside the shoe teak. Um, so that's why people like to stay on that, that page. And, and I have a lot of followers on the, on the business page too. And guess what, ladies? It's exclusive. Exclusive. So yes. So I don't restock and I don't overstock. Okay. And, um, um, my sizes is from six to 11 and 12 to 16, a special order. I have a few companies that do um, cater to that, that class of women, you okay. know, on the, I don't keep them in stock because I can open stock order one, sure. which is awesome. Right. Mm -hmm. So I won't be sitting on these sizes. I can't get rid of. Right. Um, I will assure you that I will say this to you, please follow. When I say, almost sold out a pre-order. I'm suggesting that because people really pre-order. I remember when I first started telling that my audience like, okay, um, you might want to pre-order this because it's going to sell fast. I think they thought it was a marketing piece, which is brilliant, right? but it was the truth. And then I started getting feedback like, Oh, it's really gone. I'm like, uh, yeah, I might have had six tens. Right. Right. Because like, again, like I said, I don't overstock. I can't just call the, the shoe, um, supplier and say, Oh, give me a case of tens. No, one case to come with one six, one six and a half, one seven, oh, one seven wow. and a half, two eights, two nines, two tens and one eleven. So how did they develop that formula? So what if you do need those specialty sizes? Can you just, you have to do a request? I have to No, You just have to order more of that style. Wow. Yes. And, and so you have the bigger stores that do it, but I, I, I like to do exclusive because women like exclusive. Yes. They're like, Oh, so everybody that's going to be walking around with my, sh and I don't restock it. I move on to the, and what it does for me from a marketing perspective it keeps you interested yes i'm steadily adding things every week because i'm steady turning over that exclusive piece that's gone okay it's time to move on wow so you're almost even though you're almost like a personal shopper as well yes, yes. personal shopper yes. where you learn the style of your clients mm -hmm. and then you order uh the trends the latest mm -hmm. and then you bring it to the market that's very good so i'm so excited that you shared with us who you are what you do and why it matters and we look forward to um buying my, uh, look buy my next pair of shoes <laughs> i'm always you. in the market for a good pair so again thank you for sharing with us and we are going to follow you online thank you thank you for listening to spark stories if you're looking for more help in gaining focus come check out our website where you can find episode show notes Browse our archives and access free resources like worksheets, trainings, events, and more. It's all at www.shesparks.com.